Hi, and welcome back. Um, since the last video, I did get this square hole cut out for the power connector. And I ended up using this round file to do most of the squaring off of this hole. And it was easier to control than a Dremel tool. Although, like I said, you can use a Dremel tool for this. The other thing that I like doing on these is, just like the transformers, I use the, the, the socket itself to mark the center point of the holes I'm going to drill for the mounting screws. Also, if you notice, I have this oriented with the fuse down and the plugs up because on the inside, I want this ground wire where I can run it over to a bolt over here in this corner that will ground be the safety ground for the chassis and then this is the hot wire that will be a twisted pair that runs around to the switch in the front and then the other pair that comes back will be with this one and that pair that then go to the power transformer you always want to have the hot lead first go to the fuse, then go to the switch, then to the transformer. And you want the neutral connected straight to the transformer. That way that the switch is turning on and off the hot lead to the amplifier. Since I did the last video too, I got the speaker jacks here all drilled out and beveled. So the speaker jacks are ready to install. And we got grommets, all the holes drilled for this. And so the top side's ready to install. Also, my power switch came. And as you can see, this is black, matches the chassis. It is a latching push on push off push on push off button the face of it and this little ring glow in an amber color that is very similar to the tube filament color because I've used one of these in another amplifier it looks really cool and it will be mounted right about there on the front which I tilt it a little bit you can see that's going to be in a good spot it also it has the same thread diameter as the the punch I use the green leaf punch that I use for the uh, small nine pin tube sockets so I can punch a nice round hole you want to be careful the switch doesn't have the switch doesn't have a very big lip on it and so the hole needs to be a pretty accurate size or you'll see the hole. And so you really want to use something like one of these to punch this hole for if you're going to use one of those kinds of switches. Also, this will require, uh, it's got a 12 volt LED, which it'll operate off eight volts or so. So I'll need to do a bridge rectifier and to get the 12 volts off the filament voltage to power up the LED. So it adds a little complication to the amplifier to use this kind of switch. If this is your first build, you might want to use a different kind of switch. Maybe use one that's a combo fuse power connector or add one on the side here that's just a simple SPST on off switch. So, um, Really all that's left is to punch this hole in the front for this. I'm going to do the RCA jacks later once I figure out some of the internal wiring. And the other thing is the tube sockets. One of the things that's critical, and we're going to stop here to change the battery in my freaking camera. So really all I've got left to do is install the tube sockets. And there is some 
considerations on where you put these and how you orient them to make sure that the amplifier performs well. One of the things that's super critical to me is the heater wiring. It's probably some of the most critical wiring inside the amplifier, and it's the one that's most likely to create the dreaded AC hum that nobody wants to hear out of a tube amplifier. One of the key things is to keep the heater wiring away from any of the signal or other audio wiring inside the amplifier, but of course the heater pins are right next to the other pins and so they have to get close for the tube to operate. But what we want to do is to minimize this as much as possible. So first you need to look at the tube data sheet and find out which pins go to the heater. And on this tube, on these tubes, it's pins four and five. So if we mounted the tube sideways like this, the heater wind, the heater pins are up here and they would be going over and around and the signal wires would be getting all mixed up and going over the top of the heater winding. So we don't want that. If we orient the tubes this direction with the screw holes going front to back, the heater pins are up here in the front and we can run these wires down low right over to the corner of the chassis here and then across this way, well actually, they're gonna be over here. Because it's upside down. Um, the wiring's gonna come out, over, over, and then here is your filament voltage coming out of the transformer. The other thing that we need to do is we need to reference the heater windings to ground but I'll go over that when we're working on the wiring itself. So the critical thing at this point when we're getting ready to punch these holes for the tube sockets is where are they going to be located and how are they going to be oriented. So we want them in front of each output transformer with the heater pins facing forward. So the last thing is going to be Back to our friend, Mr. Aesthetics, which to me is important as well as the performance. So transformer is going to be sitting about there. We want the tube socket to be in front of each output transformer. And then we're going to be using these little aluminum trim rings that are threaded so the bolts come underneath and you don't see any hardware holding the tube socket to the chassis. And I've looked at it from different angles and about this far from the front seems to really look nice and still have very short heater wires going up to the chassis corner. So we need to mark the centers of both these sockets through this you know, center hole in the thing, we can mark the centers for the hole and then use this Greenlee chassis punch to punch two holes for those. And then we'll do some measurements and figure out where to put these screw holes that will come through here and into here. And from experience, I know that those holes are a little closer together than these holes are a little closer together than these holes. And so I'm going to have to get my small Dremel burr and elongate these holes or move these holes in just a little bit, slot these holes so that these screws can go through the back side of the socket, through the chassis, and into this little aluminum ring. So just be aware of that if you do use these. If not, you can just use mount these underneath and use a couple of little button head screws to hold them down to the chassis. So I feel like that we've done a lot of the drilling and hole punching and stuff where you guys have a good idea of how to do that. So I'm not going to 
keep repeating doing that stuff on camera. The other thing that I'm going to have in the parts list is an optional chassis that's slightly larger than this one. It's going to be a tight fit getting all these components inside this 5x9 chassis. There's a got a pretty big capacitor here. I got a fit over here by the power transformer and then this switch is going to be coming in here and then I got to find somewhere to put this choke and then I've got you know two of these capacitors I got to fit in here with some resistor networks etc you know it's it's there's going to be a lot going on inside here and then I've also got to you know come up with where I'm going to put this volume switch which I believe I'm going to put it like Kind of like right there between the two tube sockets in the middle of the front here so there's some symmetry with this side and i got to drill that hole and get that mounted too so it is going to be a tight fit inside this chassis but i think that's part of why i wanted to use these six bm8 tubes is i'm able to create a very small footprint amplifier that is fully tube powered so Anyway, I'm going to get to drilling some of these holes. I'm going to show you mounting these components and some tricks for installing this stuff. And then we're going to start working on the wiring. If you're enjoying this series, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. It's great seeing that people enjoy my videos and inspires me to do more stuff like this. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.